Hello everyone, this first tutorial is about comparative measurements, what we might also call finding proportions or sighting. What we need is a simple object, so here we have a jar of paint, and we need a sketchbook, and we need a pencil, uh, preferably a 2B pencil. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to just very loosely uh, and quickly sketch out our object on the paper. It doesn't matter if this sketch is um, very inaccurate, um, it's just some place to start from and to give us an idea of about how large we want the object to be on the paper. Okay, so I'm going to sketch out this object, something like this. I want it to be about that large and try, try and work fairly large in your sketchbook as you do this. Okay, so the next step we want to measure the width of this object and then we are going to compare the width of the height to try and get the proportions. In order to measure the width, I want you to hold out your pencil in front of you. You want to keep your arms straight. And then we're going to move our thumb up and down the pencil in order to capture the width of the object. Okay, and this is our base unit. And we're going to use this to compare to other parts of this object. Okay, so without moving our arm, it's important to keep your arm straight so you don't change the uh, relationship between these different measurements. I'm going to compare that width to the height. Okay, it seems to me that if the width is 1, then I would consider the height to be 1, uh, about 1 and a quarter. Okay, so I'm going to put that down on, on my page here. So if my width, I'm just going to take this width that I originally started with in my rough sketch. And I'm going to use my pencil now on the paper to measure out that one and a quarter. Okay, so if this is the width, then the height is going to be one and a quarter. So it's going to be about here. Okay, so now I have this rectangle for my object to fit into. Okay, now that I have the height and width of my object, I'm going to try and find another one or two measurements to help me draw this object further. So I'm going to try to get my arm back in the same exact position to get that measurement of the width. And I'm going to find that the lid begins at about uh, three quarters of the height. If I consider um, from the bottom of this object up to the lid is about three quarters of the height. So I'm going to take that measurement on my drawing. Okay, so my lid is going to start about here. Uh, maybe I can find one more measurement. Let's see. That one more measurement that'll be helpful. Okay, if I take the measurement of my width and I go up exactly one width. I reach the center, what seems to be about the center of my lid, so where it's going to be the widest in my drawing, so about there. Okay, so now I have several different points. I have my height and width, so I have this overall rectangle. I have the point where the lid begins, and I have the point which is the center of the lid. So then I can start drawing based on these things.
Okay, so this initial measurement was kind of like an envelope that is has enclosed my figure. Uh, and then the final step I want you to take for this tutorial is just to uh, tighten up the drawing a little bit. Um, think about the contour exercises we we did in the class um, and slow down, try and get some of the details. So maybe I would very carefully draw the edge. Um, and I don't want you to erase um, unless you have had several problems that you just can't really see that original drawing. Uh, I'd rather you just move on and try again. Optimally, in the drawing that you submit to Blackboard, there will be, a, it'll be clear that there'll be some sketching below the final drawing. Okay, one more thing to add. What's really powerful about this idea of comparative measurement is, and this will be the topic of the next tutorial, but once we add another object, like let's say I add this other paint canister, um, we can still use the same dimension that we started with, this, this width. Let's say the object is over here. Um, what we would find if we measure that width and we compared that the distance now between these two objects is about one width. Okay, so if I were then to draw this object, I could use that same dimension, and move that over to figure out where this other object goes. Um, and I could do the same thing with the distance from the bottom of this object to the bottom of that object. Okay, so by using this, the dimensions that I start with, so I could think of this as a gauge or a ruler that I could use then, not only to measure my original object, but also to figure out where other objects are in the composition.